All right. And yep, it should be good to go. So go back to chess.com. All right. So playing as Lightning 13, anonymous student. Okay, let's go back. So we had, yeah, just reviewing where we are right now. So we started with the Nimzo Indian. Challenging it immediately, get the bishop pair. Knight comes after the bishop. But then I can strike back. So I can basically get the bishop back whenever I want, but it's kind of wasting time with the knight. So we'll just leave the knight there. Try and make the most of him while he's out there, right? Okay, so here we are. Queen C2, which is played. We both have about 25 minutes. Yep. Well, you have a little more than there, you go. Well, yeah, you, no, you gave me a little bonus time there. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So queen c2, my knight's under attack. So I was looking at either f5 or d5. Yeah, mm. pretty much just informal game, discussing as we go all the ideas. Uh, well, the other thing so is your, your b3 square is slightly weakened, right? I mean, yeah, as, just like my d, just like you could say my d6 square is technically. Exactly. Well, this. That happens in an opening like this where we're trading off some different pawns and creating some differences. Well, yeah, you have the half open, you have the half open D file. I have the, I have the half open B file. So exactly. we can. The question is, can we utilize those? Can you can you utilize your D file? Can I utilize my B file? Um, I am tempted to play F5 and go into this kind of Dutch setup because that's actually typical in a Nimzo Indian or a Queen's Indian, where the bishop often goes to B7. And f5 is played. Now d5 is just a different kind of game. But the thing is, if I'm going to keep the, the knights against your bishop pair, playing a d5 actually opens more lines. Yeah, somehow I like f5 in this position. It just gives me a good light square f5 control. f5 definitely is spicy. That's very It's spicy. Yeah, yeah, it's spicy. Something Simon Williams would do, right? Like spicy openings. Spicy. If you've seen his, I don't know if you've seen his things or not. But he has some spicy open. That's where I learned, I learned some crazy sideline in the dragon from that. That I actually used quite a bit. Okay, so f5 is on the board. How do you react? Okay. Well, I'm kind of a fear of thinking about, I don't really like my bishop on d2, so I might, I might put my bishop just like, I don't know, maybe put it on f4 or something. I just like it a little better there. It looks but good on f4. I also might want to put my e3 on there. I don't know. Yeah, I think I like it on f4. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's like your standard. So it's either your standard development or improving it first. But yeah, if you play e3, you've committed to that. And you can't then go bishop f4 anymore. So the other thing is a fianchetto like g3. That's always on the table. That's definitely on the table. I feel like the thing I kind of like about bishop f4, though, is I'm feeding that weak d6 square, which is what you want to do. Is utilize yeah, and that's your point. That's like your seems like that's kind of your... Your yeah. strategy here is to I attack the defense. I, I can still play e3, then it's not, and I'm not blocking my bishop in like when I'm playing e3. Yeah. Well, the thing, okay, there's, okay, I want you to find something. Okay, now think in terms of defensive calculation. So if you were playing as black here and your opponent went bishop f4, what would you try to do to maybe take advantage of that? I don't know if it's 100%, but there is something that I can do. What would black do there? Bishop yeah, just think in terms of the uh, kind of the possible negatives of that move. Because well, first of all, your king's not castled. If you look at the imbalances of the game, I'm already castled. My king's pretty safe. Your king is in the center. So think about that. Let me just make sure everything's good to go. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think you it's. Do. Um, I'm just looking for like checks along that a5 e1 diagonally from the queen. Exactly. And then, and then now, for example, let's say I go queen a5 check. Now, you don't really want to go b4. I mean, yeah, you can't go b4. I can even go knight takes b4. So, because the pin. So, you would probably have to go knight d2. Then, what would happen? It just looks nasty, plain and simple, because your knight's just hitting b2 and it's both. That does not look good. Oh, wow. I have knight d4 also. So, yeah, keep that stuff in mind. That's just, I would just suggest if you're going to go bishop f4, you have to be wary of what I can do. Well, maybe I do go for that Fianchetto bishop. That's an idea. It's actually kind of a typical reaction to a Dutch. If I'm a, if I'm essentially if I'm essentially playing a Dutch, a lot of players like to 
you know, in D4 openings, they like to fionc head of their bishop on G2, and it blocks. Well, actually, usually that's because in a Dutch, they're trying to like, they're trying to have a bishop on D6 attacking your H H2 pawn, which is not the case yeah. here. But still, I think, I, think I, I like the fionc head of those. It's interesting. I like this idea. Yeah, I mean, and okay, so your strategy, it looks like, you're, obviously you're trying to work with your bishop pair. You're trying to maximize the strength of your bishops, and you're trying to work on the D file. And you're trying to, well, ideally keep the bishop, but, but like I said, I don't really want to take on D2, because I work to get my knight on E4. It's a pretty good knight right now, so why would I take D2? It just, that just boils down. It's like in this game, I'm thinking of, I was just looking at earlier between Capablanca and Tartakower, where Tartakower like voluntarily gives up his... He trades off the knights, he trades off his b7 bishop, and he, it's, in a, it's in a Dutch setup. And then he has no more attack. Like, if you're playing the Dutch, you have to be uncompromising. You have to be aggressive. If you trade off all the pieces, you're probably just going to get a bad end game, right? Yes, you most definitely are. So that's why I'm just going to keep the not too sharp. Well, I mean, you can get sharp. Well, 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 right. You want to trade, like, so since I want to keep more pieces on the board and try to attack you, you actually... Would probably want to trade down and have a good end game once you're there. Once you're sure, it's, or like if you guarantee that you have a okay, the bishop pair in the end game on a pretty open game, the board yeah. opens up a good amount. Okay, hey, let's coach, see. Are you are you sharing your board? Is that what's happening? It's the I'm sharing. It's the board, and yeah, you can see my chess.com screen basically. I'm not sure what happened to my video on there. I mean, somehow the video didn't show up, but okay. but we have that, and then I have like your. I have your, I like bread. <laughs> Can you see it on YouTube? I just made sure. I think it looks like it's streaming. It looks like it's good. Mm. Well, I don't know. Are you I seeing, like are you seeing, did you see it or no? Did I just see what, oh, I'm not watching it on YouTube. I'm not yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on there. So it should, it'll get recorded later, so. Yeah. You can always go back to review it. Um, let's yeah. see. I guess so. it would probably make more sense if I had made my name in the Zoom call Lightning 13, but whatever. I like red. <laughs> when I got both. Let's see. Okay, so I'm tempted to play rook b8. And again, like that's just natural to stick the rook on the half open b file, attack b3 square, b2 pawn, possibly combined with queen f6. I don't know. There might be something to it. I mean, obviously, like a dream scenario for me would be to land a knight on b3, but I don't think you're going to let me do that. Yeah, it's not really that simple. Nope. And besides, if you're going to play bishop g2, then why would I want my rook on a8? It just belongs on b8. So I'm going to play rook b8. I don't see anything else at the moment. That looks like a good good developing move for the rook. Yeah. That just seems pretty standard. Yeah, Get just off. standard. Yeah. Get off the diagonal. Stick it where so it's more have, effective. Now I just go and be a kiddo, be on kiddo the bishop because it's not really small. Yeah, that's what you have in mind. And then, and then um, before you castle... I'll try to bother you a little bit with queen f6, probably. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure if I really want to encourage you to play rook b1 right away. Or I could go crazy with g5, g4, but okay. I, I'm not sure I'm justified yet. That's pretty typical. I don't know. That, that seems a bit barbaric. But remember I played that game against you where you're like, wait, what just happened? That was crazy because I played in the b3 line against you. Uh, it was like yeah, the, I was in the first, I was in like a time Yeah, yeah, and I played G4, G5, and you're like, wait, how did you win that game? Because <laughs> it looked like it wasn't going to work, but sometimes it does, right? Yeah. Now, here, probably not. Probably not here. I don't think, I think that would be overzealous. Wait a second. There is one justification for G5, though. There is one justification, though. And that is Knight D4. Trying to play Knight D4. But the thing is, you haven't even committed your king yet, so I'm not really sure if I should run my g-pawn. You might just be like, I'm just going to, maybe you get away with castle and queen side. And it's not so weak. Now nah, you drop f2 then. So. g5. g5 is the most, amb that's the ambitious option. Queen f6 is interesting also, I think. Queen f6. Rook b1, probably. <laughs> I saw your PSA, public service announcement. Okay. Yeah. That's what I asked the question for. I just wanted to make sure the chat was visible. 
Oh, that part. Let me see. I think it is. Uh, well, whatever. That's uh, uh, sort of. Half, not, of it, I said, half of it's visible. This is a public service announcement. Bread is good. It tastes nice. Easy bread. This has been a public service. <laughs> Lightning 13 slash I like bread. <laughs> nice. Oh, and then also, everyone, like my grumpy cat picture. Grumpy cat. Grumpy cat. <sighs> Let's see. You gotta get, you gotta get your plug, you gotta get your plugs in there for uh, my for my small YouTube channel. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. Nah, dude, nah, dude. But uh, hey, it's out there. It's out there. It's out there now. Let's see. Maybe I I don't know. I'm tempted. To, I, I think Queen F6 followed by maybe G5, but it's just I, I, I'm just okay. I should always look at alternative. What's that? I'm getting nervous. I don't really feel very safe. I feel like my go king side is kind of the easier way to go. Like the pieces are kind of coming. That night on E4 is annoying. Yeah, that's the point. That's the point. I'm trying to make it as annoying as possible, but uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Queen F6. Start with that. Developing the queen. Looking at B2, of course. Yeah, and then obviously I just play rook b1 here. Right, I don't have to commit to g5 yet. So while you think about your move, I'll think about g5. Okay, you're, like, not much time to think on that because you kind of know like what, you kind of know what you want to. Yeah, you kind of know what you want to do. Unless you did like bishop c1, but that just doesn't look necessary. Um, so yeah, again, g5 is a very ambitious, like very aggressive option, but it does have it does have a point. It does definitely have a point, which is g4 and then knight g4. So there is a point. At least there's a reason to do, to do it. Yeah. I don't know. You're kind of going a bit in on the attack, so it seems like you might want to play something like that, but I don't know. I mean, that's a committal move. There's actually a part in Art of Attack and Chess where he talks about, uh, Vukovic talks about how much of a commitment you're going to make, right? It's like once you go there, you're kind of beyond the point of no return. When I make a move like g5. Well, it's a weakening move, essentially. So it's kind of like I have to look at my attack. Right, that's the thing, though. But like, I have to compare that against something, something else that's, uh, I don't know, bishop, bishop b7 or something, which blocks my rook and doesn't seem consistent. But no, it's not bad. Bishop b7 shouldn't be bad, but yeah, it's not in the nature of this position. I think yeah, g5, g4 is the testing. But, but, okay, I know that I, I could lose because of that. Though. That's the thing. It's a risk. In other words, it's a higher risk move. This could lose if I'm not careful because of my king is exposed and you have the bishop pair. So it's very, very risky. Okay, that is an interesting idea. But at least I'm trying At least I'm trying to fight for the initiative. That's the point. I'm trying to fight for this some initiative. This situation kind of makes me want to go and play h1. Well, that might be a bit too much. Okay, let's say what happens. Let's say you go h4. Well, you have to calculate. Okay, tell me the line. Tell me the line. What happens? No. If I go h4, and I don't know, it kind of looks like a thing that maybe you could bypass. Yeah, of course, of course, I'll play g4, almost certainly, yeah, because I want to play g4 anyway. Actually, it's interesting. There's actually a Magnus Carlsen. Uh, it's a Kramnik versus Carlsen game. He plays uh, Carlsen plays a hedgehog like d6 and e6. It really kind of looks passive. And then suddenly he goes f5, g5, g4, and he's got like 95. Like all of his pieces start starting. He just he just like knocked Kramnik off, you know, kind of like off his feet. Uh, and definitely caught him off guard. That was like 2008 or something, or 2010 or something. Um, that makes me feel really good about my chances. No, I'm just saying, sometimes this kind of flash attack thing with G5, G4, sometimes it works, sometimes it miser fails miserably. It backfires. It sometimes it backfires. The thing is, if I play four and push, then I can kind of just go and play just knight G5 or maybe bishop G5. Oh, no. oh, you do have bishop g5. So if I go g4, you go bishop g5. Now let let's say, oh, that's crazy. I can there, there's actually a line where I can get three pieces for a queen there. You see that? I think so. Yeah. What if I take okay? Let's say I go g4, h4, g4. You go bishop g5. Now let's say I take on f3 with my pawn. Then what happens? Calculate that line. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah, I'm hitting your rook, threatening to get a new queen. So you have to move your rook, right? Exactly. You play rook, rook g1. g1. And then your knight takes my bishop. Or the rook takes, because my knight's not hanging. Probably, mm -hmm. yeah, but my knight's not hanging. So I could potentially take with the rook. 
That's interesting. Well, that's a little messy. I don't know if I want to go into that or not. Well, well, you don't have to play bishop g5. Like, you can play h4, you, but the thing is, you have to be ready for, again, like, what's my main idea? It's not even a kingside attack, maybe, but it's not necessarily a kingside attack. It's actually central play. Because I'm still playing, I'm actually, my main thing I've got going on now is my pressure on your b-pawn. So, this is actually consistent. Why? What does g4 prepare? Let's say you go, okay, let's say you just, I don't know, let's say you just castled. And I, some random move, like, some developing move. Let's say you castle. I go g4. Now let's say you played knight h4 or something, or knight e1. Let's say you go knight h4. Then what's my point? What do you think is the idea then? Wait, what happens if you go d4 and I have knight? So yeah, h4, g4. So let's, say, let's say you castle. You just castle and just ignore me. Let's say I go g4. Just to know like if I have a real threat or not, right? So I go g4. Let's say you go knight h4. Then what happens? Then that small book, like, you're just... Like right, then I hop into d4. Because my knight was the only thing I was holding in check. Yeah, so in that case, you have, well, you have to determine whether that's actually a threat. Figure out, is knight d4... I mean, obviously it's unpleasant to see the knights... Because I have the knights, so I'm trying to make them strong, right? Like the imbalance, imbalance idea. The imbalance is you have the bishops, I have the knights, so I want to make my knights as strong as possible and annoy you with them. So knight d4, getting... Temporary outpost, like e4 is kind of also a temporary outpost. Like you could always play f3 later, but it's not super easy. But d4, definitely you can kick me out of d4 later. But the question is, should you even let me into d4 in the first place? I don't think I can. I think it looks too small. It's very annoying. That's because I also the thing is I have rook b3 ideas too. I can sink a sink the rook on b3. Maybe I even toss in bishop a6 and hit the c pawn in some lines. And then the rooks, if I can if I can throw in bishop a6. Rook F B eight. I'm just really going all out on the on the B file end. That's again, that's my imbalance I'm trying to use. Yeah, I think I need to play H four and just try for something. I don't know. I mean, you you got to you got to weigh it out. You you have to know if it's a real threat. Then you say then you got to say to yourself, well, do I have a way to stop knight G four, knowing that G four is going to happen or unless you want to play h3 actually so you have like you should look at three candidate moves right h4 is the h4 is the most aggressive response to an aggressive move h3 is a more modest move like saying okay try me can you really are you really going to play g4 and like take back with your f pawn because what's going to think about that i don't really want to play g i'd probably play h5 to prepare it but you got to look at h3 as a sort of solid move and then you have to look at a move that stops me i would suggest anyway you should stop me from coming in to d4 which would be which move? Like E3. E3. I mean, it's kind of passive looking, but look, it stops knight. It stops the knight D4. But otherwise, I drop my knight. So I prefer H3. I think. I think H3. Well, you gotta weigh them out. Let's weigh them out carefully. Let's look at each one. So this is a critical moment because I'm trying to attack here. You can't let the attack happen. So if you go, or you, either that or you counterattack. But if you go H3, let's say, well, then it buys you another move after H5, and it weakens my position more after H5. But I'm still kind of getting g4 in. But then you you still have to, and you still have to make a decision about whether you're going to allow knight d4 or not. Because you got to be really concrete about that. If you don't like knight d4, don't let me, probably don't let me do it. By considering e, then you really have to consider a move like e3. Maybe. I think maybe maybe maybe. This is all about weighing out candidate moves, right? I think... I'm going to write that down, actually. I, mm -hmm. I really don't know if immediately, right now, before causing you to maybe weaken your position further, I want to go and block my bishop in. I don't think I want to do that. I think I should just wait with h3 first. Right, and then you see if I go h5. But if, exactly. but, yeah, well, and that weakens my g5 square if i if you force me to play h5 to carry out the attack mm -hmm. then that means that i i can never guard g5 with the pawn again because at least now i have the h6 option which makes it a little, a little less weak right so you go here okay now you do technically weaken g3 that's kind of theoretical but theoretical weakness does that mean i can does that mean i win it probably not but at least you know that g3 is a little bit softer than it was 
because it only has one guard now. So for example, there's always lines with, usually that's more important if there's a bishop on d6 or c7, you know, where you have to worry yeah. about like knight g3 or knight f2 sacks or something. But here, yeah. yeah those can get a little low to love them. Yeah, but now that I don't have, oh, the other thing is, that's actually, I think I like this move because you're also saying, look, if you go h5 and g4, you're giving me an open h file. Maybe you just play king f1 and king g1 or something. Maybe you just don't castle because you're like, oh, thanks for opening my H file for me, right? Maybe. So essentially, you and I can't. Well, what do you think? Should I really go G four now? That's worse, isn't it? It's a much worse, um, much worse scenario for me now because what happens? G four, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. What happens to my knight? Bye bye. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. There is knight takes D two. That's always on the table, but now your knight just takes back. You still have, oh, oh, that's terrible. I can't take back because then you mate me on it. I get mated on uh, h7. Yeah, but you on, have the line to make open right. My pieces can be strong. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you, you have a lot of potential energy. The only thing, I, the only piece that's not my favor is probably your rook on b1. But I was thinking actually in certain lines you almost have b4. If you can play b4 then the rook is definitely justified on b1. But for now, okay, he's just stopping my immediate attack. And then you can carry out your counterattack. Let's see. What about, okay, I have to look at knight d4 right now. What if I just play knight d4? You probably take me. Queen takes back. Bishop. That gets really interesting if we play that line. But then you just go bishop e3. Then I go queen e5. Yeah, it's very interesting. I'm threatening almost knight g3 in that line. I think you can just chop the knight, though. Bishop takes knight on e4. Pawn takes laterally guarding the g-pawn. Wow, this is getting very complex now. Yeah, knight e4 is just like, but that's very, again, that's committal too. But that's getting very interesting. Um, but I kind of have to, yeah. But h3 is a good move when you look at it. That's why it's important you consider that before just going into h4, because... This is a move that could be frustrating for a player who just wants to go all out and attack, right? Because obviously, someone who's playing kind of a Dutch, they want to attack you. And you're like, yeah, uh, you're like, uh-uh. You and, you're, and you're doing that in this game, so. I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to challenge you, but you're you're dinner. up to the challenge. You're, you're, you're rising to the challenge. My dinner has come. I'm happy. Nice. Dinner and chess. Exactly. Seriously, though, I love to eat you on my chess. Great food. Yeah, well, especially with salmon. Ah. Or like some omega, like omega three, <laughs> um, got to have those omega threes, right? Let's see. Hmm. This is really a big moment, though. Yeah, this is a critical moment for sure because whatever I do, whatever I do now determines it. Oh wait, we're playing no increment too, right? Yeah. Oh, we should have had an increment on this because we're discussing so much. That's okay. Well, we have 15 minutes each, or 14 minutes each, so I think it's, it's just, we just got to really, we have to take our time at the critical moments, and then we're probably going to have to pick up the pace. Let's see. Yeah. Or we can always add time. We can always add time if we need to. But we'll see how we do. <sighs> so knight d4 is definitely, okay, I should look at it. Are there any other candidates? Literally, like, I took seven minutes on my last move. That was an important move for you. Now it's an important move for me. I mean, I could just abandon the whole thing and take your bishop, but that's a cop-out. That's a cop-out to take on d2. I mean, well, the only thing is you can't take with your knight. You can't take with your knight because you allow, then you do allow knight d4. What's that? I'd be very much cool with you going and taking that. I don't know. I mean, it's a move. It's a move. It's something Because you, you don't really want to take with your king. You only have three cho two choices then, really. If you take with your knight, you give me knight d4. Not the end of the world, but it's slightly annoying, right? Uh, if you take with your queen, I might go rook b3. So I don't know. Is there something to it? Oh, wait. Maybe even bishop a6 then, like I talked about. Like I mentioned bishop a6 move. Oh, and you could take on d7 and stuff. I'd have to look at that. I don't know. Taking on d... Given that the knight d4 move might be premature, kind of, if I take on d2, though, it's just... Again, yeah, it's, I don't want to trade too many pieces, though. I like my knight a lot on, G, on e4. But hey, sometimes you got to transition, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay, hold on. What about bishop a6 right now? Just beginning that to put would pressure. Be interesting. Beginning to put pressure on a c4. 
would be very interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting line. Now, you go B3, hey, maybe. Coach, yeah. what's the name of your YouTube channel? I want to go give you a sub. <laughs> Thanks. It's uh, Chess on the Brain. Cool. Um, yeah, so you should see it. If you go on the channel, it should be on there. Going, like, on the front, on the main page. Well, it should, yeah. be, it should well, be live. Yeah. Um, let's see. So it's either, okay, so my candidates are coming down to, I think, knight d4, bishop a6. We got this. Is it the one that, um, chess on the brain with Ed and David Bennett? Yep. Cool. Bam. Yeah, it's kind of a long title, but. <laughs> All right, I just subscribed to you, so be happy. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Bishop a6 is tempting, but I think you just go b3. But this yeah, I think I just help. I think I help you secure your pawns that way, and it takes away the option of a. I might want a5 in certain lines. You said it what? Need to make this like classical. This is a lot of thought. Yeah, this is very. This is a super complex position right here, and I, I'm not even super familiar with them. I feel like a lot of games kind of... we play end up in super complex positions. Well, actually, every single every single sparring game we've played has been very complex. Well, I remember like the first one was I think the uh, exchange when I sacked the exchange or something. It was like a knight for a rook and a pawn. And, I mean, I mean, yeah, a, I mean, a knight and a pawn for a rook. Yeah. But I think you had a defense in that, and then and then I know so, that, and then the next game you almost beat me. For those of you who don't know about our history, um, he beats me every time except when we drew once. Yeah, but. No, but but but, but no, but all these times, but no, but all these times you're coming so close though. You just need to show the right technique. I'm not gonna make it easy for you, but if you get that winning position, you just gotta work on your technique because I know that's like batting practice for you. Because when you're then when you're in tournaments, you'll be able to finish them off, right? But we can actually do more sparring games from winning position. Like let's say you take a winning position and then you have to practice winning winning it. That's to convert it. That's actually a good way to. That's a good way to uh, spar. Yesterday he beat me with the queen sack. Yeah, wait, what was the wait? What was the queen sack? You Which, beat me with the queen sack yesterday in your play. Oh, you mean like at the very end? At the very end. Oh, right. You mean the queen takes f8 and rook e8? Yeah. Yeah. Even though, even though you did the p, but you did the piece, the mouse slip. But I guess it didn't make a difference at that point. Yeah, my mouse is on timeout today because it slipped up like two two times yesterday. Okay, okay, let's see. This is critical. So, okay, another candidate move is d5 that I was looking at. Maybe d, d5 is just going for the center. Just going all out for the center. That's just really going for like a space conqu conquest for space, but it's definitely risky as well. Yeah. It's very interesting. Actually, d5 is very interesting. Side of the board thing. What's that? That's just giving up on your whole side of the board thing. Well, I'm just playing across the board, really. But that would be, yeah. I mean, I would be creating weaknesses, but I would, it's a very, it's a, it's an aggressive. I don't. Know, I think it's interesting though, and I just kind of want to see how you react to that if I go d5. Because, because it, 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 if after all this tension and stuff, you just took on d2. No, no, no. I'm not taking on d2. No, yeah, that's the thing. D2 just kills the tension. No, but the thing about d2 is that if I liked, if I really think that bishop rook b3 is good, I'll do it. Because you probably have to take back with your queen, and then I do have rook b2. Um, but if, or if I had like knight a5, no, it's just rook b3 is not the greatest. Only if I had, if I were more prepared. I mean, the thing about d5 is it's, it is hard to attack my pawn. I, I'm just going to do it because I want to, I'm going to see how you respond. I think it's okay. an interesting, I think this is very interesting for a practice game because I'm just like going all out, throwing my pawns at you. And I want to see how you react to that. It's not. I don't think it's a bad move. I don't think there's an immediate reputation to it, but it's a risky move. Again, g5 and d5 are both both risky moves because I'm giving you targets, but I'm also trying to squeeze you with my pawns, like bow constrictor squeeze. Hmm. I guess you. I kind of just have to go and take. Or hmm. uh, you don't have to take. If I go bishop a6, that would really be for That's what I want, though. See, I want to combine that with bishop a6, probably. And then I really yeah, force... Yeah, I want to avoid bishop. the pressure. But if you take, I I really... Well, then I have the hanging pawn. I have, like, two sets of hanging pawns. Um, f5 and g5 and d5 and c5. But if it takes... e takes d5, then... 
But then I, I don't know. Those, then I could play like C4 even in some cases. C4 would make it so I can squeeze. Yeah, it'd be a nice squeeze on the white squares. Although I would block the bishop a6 stuff. I don't know. There's so many possibilities. It's a very rich position. I really like this position, actually. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I prefer not to be in complex positions against masters. <laughs> maybe being not a master. <laughs> no, you need... Okay, well, the thing is, though, like, if it's a very simple position, well, usually a master, like, some masters got there, got there usually because they are good at... If they're good at end games, they probably are good at end games. They know they'll see something. But no, I mean you're good at end games too. So. But still, if you can win, no. But complex positions that are highly imbalanced, I think that's actually your best shot to beat a master or an expert, because they might miss something. They might underestimate you. Well, I don't think you're underestimating me. Anymore. Well, the thing is, uh, I'm taking risks. I, 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 you know, very knowingly taking risks here, which is fine. But that means well, if I take a risk, it means I could lose, though. It means I have a higher chance of losing. Or maybe what? I don't know. I'm just thinking. Yeah, this reminds me of a game somehow. I don't know. It's like... No, this has happened. I've seen some players with white doing this. Like, I don't know. It might be out of a, out of a stonewall attack or something like that. I don't know. Something similar. Oh. Yeah, it's a very, it's kind of unique though. It's, a, it's an interesting. I don't see games like this all the time, like these wings, the two wing, the two wings, of, the two, the two sets of hanging pawns. Yeah. I mean, you could just ignore everything in castle. That's one option. What are your candidates now? What are your candidate moves? Well, I've got either castle, take, or. What else do you have? Castle? Yeah, I think those are your two main candidate moves. Castles, takes, or somehow ignores. Ignoring is essentially. Uh, castling is essentially ignoring. Yeah. But I could go d4, keep that in mind. I could play a. Uh, d5 to d4 but i would be blocking a lot of my pieces that way yeah it's like sure i can claim i have a pawn on d4 but it blocks my knight it blocks my queen that's just yeah. a, that would be a totally different strategy d4 e5 kind of just trying to roll the central pawns it's not a bad maybe it's not it's not bad but it just shifts the focus and then it takes the tension off it actually takes the tension off the center this was also random but i'm thinking what if there was some way i could play d4 sometime Sure, sure. I mean, G you know, G four is possible in some lines because it actually, it, it would remove the, it, it could remove a guard from E four, but it also yeah. could open up the F file against your F two point. So. And then it also, could, I don't know. I was thinking more of losing the defender from the knight, and also maybe open up some stuff with my queen against H seven, maybe, maybe. But. Yeah, it's actually G four happens a lot. There's like certain lines against the Dutch where they do G four. Like, usually the bishops are on d3 and the queen's on c2, and then they try and go g4 to pry open the, the light squares, or maybe uh, maybe in a king's Indian sometimes. they go. The point is you're trying to strike on the light squares and undermine my e4. But the e, but the thing about d5 is it really grips that. It really gets a grip on e4. It's got, like, that equal grip right there. So it's kind of hard to remove the knight now. And that's the thing about playing h3. You can't play f3 now since g3 would fall in almost every line. So yeah, it's actually a consistent move. I got to I I should say it's consistent at least because I'm just playing I'm playing for the knight on e4. That's my main strategy. The knight on e4 and the dia and the pressure on b2. Those are the two main things I've got going. But and then now you've got your bishop, you still got your bishop here and you've got lots of weaknesses to try to get. If you can open lines, it would be great for your position, right? Mm. You would have to find a way to somehow make a break. I don't know though. I don't want the pressure to just pile up on my feet pawn. So do I just trade and just try to just attack the hanging pawn? Well, come up with some concrete ways to do that. Like let's say you traded. Then I would have the half open e file to use. I might just take and go bit rookie eight and then hit your e pawn too. I mean, if you play e3, you weaken your d3 square. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of murky. Mm. Oh, you can always. Nah, I don't think you want bishop e3. You might get hit by f4 or something. Um, yeah, you don't want. Yeah, you gotta watch out for f4 in certain lines. 
But if I, yeah, if I go F4, then you might even go G4 to bypass. Because you, you probably don't want me to open up my F file. I think I should take. That's the one I'm kind of feeling more comfortable with. Okay, but taking is, taking is effectively trading what? Your C pawn for what? My C pawn for your E pawn? Yeah, it's essentially removing the C pawn or removing the E pawn. So, so you're, remo you're you're trading a fourth rank pawn for a third rank pawn, which is it's going to give me a really dynamic center though. So just be wary of that. Be, you know. But at least it gives me targets, and at least it makes yeah, me yeah. the one who's trying to hit pieces, not you. Yeah, you have to make a trade. Yeah, it's a trade off. It's like it's a little risky for you as well, but at least it gives you something to work with. Now the question is, if you are the question is time. Okay, your timing is now. But the question is, should you do it now or should you, um, you know, castle first? Well, I guess you were going to do it either way. So there it is. And now I got to watch out for my. That's why I said maybe I play c4 because I'm a little worried about my c5 pawn in some lines. It's a tricky position for you though because it's like, what do you do? How do you strike at it? You know, you should. There should be something for you, but how? Maybe I castle now. Yeah, you just need to get your pieces out. Get you get your king out of there because the e file is opening. Yeah, so you castle. Good choice. Um, I probably toss in. See, like I said, since I didn't commit to h5, I can play h6. That's at least it makes g5 a little less weakening, right? Because h6 can solidify for the most part g5. At least yeah, it makes it less dangerous for me. Now I, I now I want to play on the. Uh, I do want to play on the e file. So rookie eight's in the air. I think bishop a6 is called for it. Oh, wait. wait. Okay, I good. I got lateral defense on c6. So queen a4 doesn't seem to work. Yeah, bishop a6 just threatens e2, right? So I want to see again. I'm just kind of testing you, seeing how you were. Oh, and the other thing is that, keep in mind, by playing. Oh, wait. I didn't think about that, actually. By playing, that was actually, well, maybe that was part of it, but I didn't realize that actually did sort of renew the idea of g4. I'm not sure it's good, but at least I have the option of g4 because because the knight's guarded now. Because remember the other line where I couldn't take back with the f pawn because well, first of all, it opened up your h rook, which is now moved, so it's less dangerous for me to open, to okay. play g4. And secondly, when you move your knight, you're not my my knight on e4 is not just falling immediately. So I don't know. G4 is in the air, so I have three candidate moves. I think g4, rook e8, and bishop a6. Bishop a6 is like the the standard move I got I definitely if I can't prove anything better I just got to go bishop a6 because that's standard developing connecting the rooks hitting you two it's just a it looks good the only thing about it being on the this current diagonal is that on, on c8 a, 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 h3 diagonal is that if I play g4 I'm guarding the g4 pawn still oh and if you trade I could play bishop f5 yeah I don't know it's a tough call yeah. so bishop a well the question is okay then I have to look at it a little more concretely so I go bishop a6. This is really interesting, though. I know. It's fascinating. The thing is, how do you attack d5? d5 is my main problem, actually. In certain lines, d5 is a problem. But you don't have queen b3. You don't have queen c4. You only have queen d3. But let's say, which is another argument for bishop a6, right? But I, but, but I got to look at g. The main move I got to really think about right now is g4. Because that's a pressing. That's my most pressing move I can do. Uh, I'm threatening a knight, so so it's a threat, right? Start with forcing moves, capture, check, check, capture, and then threat, and then quiet move. So if it's a, it's a th about yeah, like three down, and the forcing move hierarchy. So so G so definitely got to consider it. So G4. Okay, let's just say you take main line, takes takes. You got to move your knight. Knight. Let's say you go knight H2. But like I said, I have bishop F5. Okay. Now, then you have queen. I don't really like this very much for my pieces. It makes me a bit unpleasant to move on. Well, let's say you don't take. Let's say you just move your knight somewhere. Knight, knight e1 to transfer it to d3 and hit my c pawn. So I go g4. You go knight e1. Yeah, then I go knight d4 again. Then you go queen. Oh, I have bishop a6 in that line because the queen laterally guards it. All right, I think I'm going to go for it. It looks good, right? It looks pressing. It's definitely pressing forward, literally. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's literally it's stepping into your territory. But it does. But it does. Uh, it definitely puts the pressure on you and makes you uh, play accurately. So I'm gonna go for it. I think it's more concrete than Bishop A6 immediately. Bishop A6 is always there, but the thing is, like I said, I had. 
Bishop f5 is four. something. I might, I I might want bishop f5. Right after I castle, so I have nothing now. Do you want to? Do you want to add some time to both of our clocks so we can think more? Or we can do that. Why don't we add? What is it? Well, you still have. No, you'll still have two more minutes than me. How about you want to move it up to like ten minutes so we can talk since we're talking? So we'll go up to. So how about? What do you want to do? I have eight. You have ten. Um. Or I have ten. You have twelve or something. Okay. Yeah, we can do that last time. Okay, so you have 12, or you want to, how much do you want to do? Take 12, you can take 10. Yeah, that, and, then, and then we'll just play it from there. But there's just too much going on here. <laughs> we're just, there's, we're discussing too many complex ideas, so we're not going to, and that's the problem I had, I just tried the simul, and I, yeah, I did, that time I messed up on the timing, the time management. That was funny. Which one? The, the, the um, just now? With the hippo hippo thymol. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, oh, I, mean, no, I did the same thing again. I've been doing pretty well on those. I got the timing down, but then I messed it up again. And I, I started drawing. And I even had one where I was like, I had a queen and a bishop for two rooks. I was like crushing the guy, but I had to, I just lost on time. So that was too bad. Um, But it was fun. I got a barely a plus score. I got, it was plus five. It was uh, five wins, four losses, one draw. So that was bad. But I, I, I had a nice 10 0 streak last night, but that was 960. So I got to, the hippo needs to come back. So, no, I did do one hippo, though. I did do one hippo that went well. But usually the hippo, play hippo has trouble. What if I play knight h2? Can I play knight h2 without a thing? I mean, you have three options pretty much, right? You either take it. I think I think we discussed, I think you don't like taking much, right? Well, but I don't know. Unless you tossed in, like, bishop c3. But no, you can't do that. I just take your bishop and take your knight. So you either no, have I can't take. knight h2, I I knight can... h4, knight e1. Well, that h2 puts pressure on g4, that's for sure. Maybe I should do that, because I don't really see that many better options. Okay. And then, well, essentially what you're doing then is you're making me keep my... You're kind of making me keep my bishop on the, that diagonal, and it, you, you make me a little more wary of playing uh, bishop a6. Because then you okay. just... Well, I don't know, that's just a mess, but I de I'm definitely more cautious about that. You know, maybe then I play h5, but that's committal. That's, that's forcing me to commit more. I kind of like an IH too. Yeah, that might be our top choice right there. It looks like it. But before, again, before I do anything, yeah, 94 is coming though. That was my original idea. That's got to come next. And it drives yeah, you away. From, yeah. It probably drives you away from my C pawn. Yeah, 94 is just. That's the whole point, right? 94 just happens because it hits the queen and it it's hits. So funny that move took me. What is that? Negative four minutes and negative seconds. Oh, wait, because of the time adding? Yeah. <laughs> so you gained four moves. So throughout that move, you actually gained almost five minutes. Yeah. What so, is it now? Queen d1 or queen d3? Hmm. Well, queen d3, you have to remember, I have a certain line you have to watch out for. That's and that's the nice game. thing about knight g4 is it clogs up the d file. So queen d3 doesn't even threaten d5. Yeah, I think I have to play queen d1. Yeah, bishop a, yeah, queen d3, bishop a6 is just too much. Okay, and then I'm hitting, e, then I get e2 with check and so forth. Okay. So now what? Um, it's like, okay, I've achieved it. I've achieved my knight d4, but now what? Folks, this isn't going well. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, you're holding on here. I think you're okay. I respect you. Or not so respectfully. Doesn't matter. Well, gotta respect each other in chess, all right? Respect your opponent. We're all very respectful human beings, except for those of us who aren't. But it's probably because they don't eat enough bread. Let's see. So Bishop A6 comes to mind. But again, there's that problem I have on... Uh, Oh, but this might override the g4 problem because I would take with bishop e2 and then recapture. Yeah, bishop a6 is tempting. And then if you go rook e1, maybe h5 then. Yeah, and the nice thing about that knight is it just 
it just sits there because you don't want to give up your light squared bishop properly because it covers your king. It's just a good piece generally. And you don't want to play f3 again because then I take g3. So I think bishop a6. Pawn takes pawn, bishop takes e2. I don't know. You have some crazy lines you got to consider though. I'm going to try it. Let me see. Hold on. Before you play, I want to do it before you get e3 in. Because if you get e3 in, I'm like, ah, I can play knight b3. But actually, I'm like having second thoughts about knight b3. Yeah. If anything, uh, you can use the. There's an interesting game. Uh, I think it's. Is it a Kamsky game or something where he goes rook b3 and uses his rook to attack the king from like from a b file attack to a king side attack? Often, it's very common to get to b2 and attack on like f2. But there's an interesting. I think it's a Kamsky game where it goes from b3 to g3. Okay, I'm going for bishop a6. Let's just go all out and just mobilize the pieces and make some threats and see what you do. I'm scared. Well, I'm putting pressure on you, but just stay objective. Don't worry about it. Just find the best move. So I'm attacking you. I'm attacking you too. What do you do about it? Play the bishop to the knight. No, that doesn't even work because I'm not even taking the right pieces. Ah! Well, um, well, what's the natural way to defend? Okay, I'm attacking you too. What's the natural way to defend it? Rook e1, probably. Rook e1. Yeah, that's your natural move. Pawn takes pawn is worth worth looking at, actually. There's an interesting line I want you to look at. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Nice. It's in a, you take. I take on e2. Wow. But then you have a move I want you to think about this. And visualize the position. H takes g4. Bishop takes e2. I want you to visualize something. I'm not sure if it works, but it's worth looking at. It's an interesting counterattack. Think about that. So your pawn's on g4, my bishop's on e2. And this has to do with my king being open, right? The fact that I've... The point is you're demolishing my, my structure in front of my king. So it's worth looking at. What do I play like G5? Yeah, like? that's what I'm looking at, but you should at least calculate it because, well, your your rook and your queen are forked, but it doesn't mean you should just write it off because still your G5 pawn is pretty strong. Oh, I guess I just go knight takes G5, but still it's, um no, then you have bishop takes pawn check, see? Knight takes G5 allows bishop D5 check. So you might be sacking an exchange in some lines, but hey, you got to be open to that. It might be, it might give you the right counterattack. Like, see, that's the thing. You know, it's kind of a cutthroat situation, but. It's very sharp, but if you want to exploit my weaknesses that I've created by throwing all my pawns forward, you have to be very sharp. Now that, is, that doesn't mean you have to go. It doesn't mean you have to go for every line, but you should at least consider it and maybe go for it. I think I think that might be an idea that might be good to do for like a little bit of desperation because it's not like I can just kind of grind this out because I'm gonna lose it. And switch. So. I think I should do it. Well, there's actually some pretty tricky lines. You you got to calculate this. Trying to calculate this all. Okay, you take on g4. You got to think about it. Because I have knight takes e2 check also. There's some crazy lines actually. It's very, very tactical. This is like super tactical stuff. This could be in probably some, some like puzzles could be made from this position, I feel like. There's very interesting lines. So you take on g4. I take on e2. I was looking at bishop takes e2, but I think more effective is maybe knight takes check on e2. You have to go king h1 if you don't want to drop your queen. Okay, then what happens after king h1? I have another attack that you should look at. I have a knight on e2 then, on, a knight on e2, and e4. Then what happens? Defensive oh, calculation. Take on g3. Maybe I sack on g3, and then you have to take back. If I go like knight 4 takes g3, it's a mating structure, so you'd have to take. The knight takes again, and your king has to go back to g1, and then what happens? So now there's a knight on g3, all the pawns are gone, except for the g pawn on g5. Your king goes back to g1, then what? Um. How do I check you again? Knight's on. I only have one knight left on g3. Diagonal, diagonals are open. Oh, so you go on with queen d4? Queen d4 check. Then you can't go to h1 because the knight's on g3, so you have to block. 
rook f2, and then maybe knight e2 check. It's a crazy line, right? It's like a very long line, but... Okay, that doesn't look good. It doesn't look good, yeah. Then I have knight e2 check. If you go king f1, knight c3 wins the queen. If you go back to h1, I take on f2. So that's a, that's a crazy line. It actually looks like it might work. It's all forcing. Well, then it looks like I should avoid that. Yeah, the rook becomes a problem on f2. So, yeah, maybe you don't take on g4 yet. So you, you probably have to deal with e2. That's like a direct threat. It's a very direct threat. You probably have to play rook e1. So I think I probably just have to play rook e1. Just, just, yeah, just guard the pawn. And then you continue your, yeah, little prophylactic move, just safety move. Then you go forward with your counterattack. At some point, you're waiting for your counterattack, right? You're like waiting for when, when the moment's right for your counterattack. Okay. Hmm. So now might be a move to a moment to do like h5, but that seems a bit. I'd rather do something more, more pressing again. Of course, that should be your intuition. Your intuition should be make the most aggressive move. It's going to put the most pressure on my opponent. Uh, in this case, what is it? You should always try and do that. What's the move that's going to give my opponent the biggest headache? Hmm. Huh. What would give you a headache? I mean, I have I have knight. I have knight b three. Again, there's this problems. Like I can't take on. I can't move my knight if I don't want to. I don't think I want to drop my. Point. See, your bishop is very strong. It's a good thing you kept it. You're basically keeping my knight stuck where he is. Like if he has. If he moves, it's at a big cost, because then I drop the d5 part. Yeah. <sighs> this is tricky. So in this situation, I probably just h5 is correct. h5 and just keep trying to build, but let's see. You, I, I know you've got to have some tactics here, so you got to keep... My knights could become vulnerable. You have your bishops are going to become strong because lines are opening. So don't underestimate your position here. You know, you got to think about your possibilities here. Um, I mean, I suppose I could just take on h3, but that's not what I want. I, I don't want it. That pawn on g4. Well, it's restraining your knight. You can always go knight f1 to e3. By the way, that's interesting, isn't it? Knight f1 to e3, hitting d5 again. Uh, yeah, but I think I'm probably just going to go for... Uh, There's a thought that takes a little bit of time. I know, I know. But what is my threat? I'm not, I, I, I had a couple of nice quick moves in there, 19, pressing moves, 94, bishop, a6, and g4 first. Uh, but be, beyond that, what am I doing? I, I don't have any more threats. You, so that's why rook e1 must have been a good move. I need to... Yeah, well, you're probably going to play e3. But again, e3 is, e3 is possibly weakening your position, so you have to be careful. Huh? Yeah, okay, I'm going h5. I'll hold on to this... And now you have to think if you take, I might even take back with the other pawn. I might take with the F pawn to open up the F file. Mm. But even there, no, again, be so be very alert to my weak. My, I'm very, I have a very weak into position though. So I want you to try to think about how you can begin to exploit that. You know, someone is you're playing. Imagine you're playing against someone who's like very aggressive. But they're making a lot of weaknesses. They're, you can punch holes in their position. You already have punched holes in my position. I want to play h4. I want to play h4. You, you may not even need h4. You might have an, you may have another move that's uh, creating immediate threats. Nothing huge, but you make me respond by doing what? Um, Think about it. Just look for threats. Look for threats. F3. Okay, F3. I'd probably just take g3, right? Hmm. Yeah, probably not F3. Yeah. That kind of makes your position mush. <laughs> F3, it kind of makes the king side mush. So probably not F3. What else? Let me see. Queen A4, maybe? Um, there's, no threat. there's no threat, though, because my queen guards the bishop. That's the nice thing about bishop A6 is that it's laterally guarded. There's another move you have that you should look at. Rook C1, maybe? That's possible. Although then I could just probably take the B2 pawn. But you have another move. Ooh, bishop c3. Or, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm looking at that. I was looking at that. Combined bishop with maybe. Bishop f4. Yes, f4. but hold on. So you have three candidate moves. Don't move yet. Hold on. You have bishop c3, bishop f4, maybe b4 at some point, because b4 might undermine my knight. So you have all these ideas of striking on the darks. So your light squares are going to have to wait, but you have that, that energy of the bishop looking through. But you've got these ideas with the bishop that you can utilize anytime. 
But I think I've been thinking about putting that fish up on F4 for a while, but now it seems like the moment. Now is the moment, yeah, sure. And then you might combine that. Well, the thing is, you've given up on it. But yeah, you're not really going to go to C3, I think. No, the thing about bishop C3 is if I took it with my knight, if I had taken it, then then the D5 pawn would probably fall after pawn takes back. No, then I would take, I don't know, it would be a mess. Yeah, he just checks. He's good. No, he didn't need to. That's good. Okay. So, let's see. Wow, so much going on here. Yeah, I can't even go for some type of thing like knight takes e2 because after all this trades, then b2 doesn't fall because then you guard lateral. There's all these lateral. This is yeah, this is interesting because it's a like a semi-open position, you know. So yeah. the position, the lines are opening. There's a lot of tactics here. It's pretty open actually. It's kind of clogged up at some points, but there's a lot of open lines laterally for, you know, looking at the files, the ranks, looking at the diagonals. There's a lot of fresh lines to you. I, I do like my piece activity because right now all my pieces are pretty active. Uh, like your knight is the main problem. The knight needs to come. That's why I said like maybe not f1, e3, but that's time consuming. I can't even go rook b3 because you have e3 then, right? E3. Look. Yeah, I can't even do that. So yeah. maybe wait, I had another thought with this. Oh, my my safe move. You should always consider a safe move. The safe move is just rook bd8. Because that because my really my main problem in this position is my d pawn. That's my as I said, I knew I had weaknesses. And the d pawn is this thing is the thing. And that's like the bane of my existence right now. But then you start kicking me back. I don't know. You go e3. It's sketchy. 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 What about but you're going e the thing is you're threatening e3 now, right? I mean, e3 is not a perfect move to make, but it does just try to win. I mean, it's just straightforward tactic. I move it, and you take my d5 pawn. pawn. Yeah, you just win the pawn. So, okay, I think I have to... I'm not going to... I really don't want to give you the d5 pawn. Uh, my earbud keeps falling out of my ear. Sorry, I'm back. Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm going... I hear you. I'm going rook bd8. Okay, you want to you add more time again? Uh, we have to... Yeah, yeah this we is... Do we, should have done an, we should have done an increment. What's that? You should probably do a timeout. Okay, let's add, like, five minutes. Or four, yeah, how about one last one? Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll add five minutes. So we'll go to eight minutes, yeah, about eight minutes. Yeah, we should just do, we should do like a 15 second increment next time. I've given you three minutes so far. Three. Yeah, it's a little slow. On, on Lee Chest, you just press the plus button a bunch of times. But here, you have to like, are you sure you want to add time? Are you sure you want to add time? There you go. You're at eight minutes. I'm at six minutes. Cool. Um, you're, you're climbing. You're climbing. You are almost at eight minutes. No, I. But you had more time than I did. No, we so. both had about. We both had around three. That's yeah. You had like just under three. Okay, that's fine. So we both had eight minutes. But what should I do here? Maybe each four, maybe. maybe? Oh, and now if you want to con commit to that, unless you just take. What's the difference between taking and pushing H four? Well, h4 fixes my h5 pawn, which may become an endgame weakness. Exactly. And, and if you that's take, and if you take, you might, that's the thing about the, yeah, the, the f file doesn't do anything for me. So there you go. But the, this is an example of what you're doing, though. This is an example of of weaknesses under attack. You know, you're just, and h4, you just, I think you have, definitely have good endgame prospects just because you have I'm such a solid play. position. It's just playing as the weaknesses. Exactly. Okay, now you're making me really think here. Let's see. Back to first. <laughs> no, every time you make me think. It's just a matter of when. The, 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 once it gets crazy. Well, it got pretty crazy. Like what? It started getting crazy right around the time I played G5. G5 and D5. Now there was a lot. To, and then especially once G4 happens, then there's a lot of very, very... Then it got quay quay. Yeah, there were a lot of complex lines. I think maybe I shift my queen to b6. I think, I, oh. Rook f8 is a candidate. Yeah, rook f8 looks pretty natural, yeah? Rook f8. Well, the thing about you playing uh, b4 is I can just bypass it, and then I get a pass. No, b4 just drops the, the exchange, doesn't it? I just hope it's dropping some stuff. Yeah, knight c3. Unless you give up your bishop. Yeah, I think rook f8 is a natural move now. 
Because you don't really have... Oh, you do have. <laughs> well, you could try to win the exchange with bishop takes knight. You see that? Yeah, that's an idea. I don't know. We get into some complicated stuff. That's kind of where you say you think you can do it. Go ahead and try to do it. No, no, no. I don't need to. I mean, I, I don't think I have enough there. I mean, bishop takes, rook takes, bishop g5. I have to move my queen. You take, I take. Then you deal with the threat on e2 or something. I don't know. Oh, I could go knight. No, then I could toss in knight takes e2 check, but you could move away. Yeah, you're really solid here. That's the thing. You've kept your your advantage is your solidity, really, and your maybe your bishop pair. But but the knights are pretty good. The, 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 the knights are pretty good. Line. What's that? The bishop pair is a little borderline, but sure. Well, your bishop at four. It's really your that's your best piece right now, and your queen's not bad. But yeah, your rooks don't want to do more. Your knight wants to do more. You need to figure out your pieces are a bit tangled. You have to get them out. My pieces are a little more active. My knights are very active. They're happy. Doesn't that happen in every single game? What? You get the more active pieces. Well, than generally speaking, I mean, that, that's what you, you that's what you have to do. I mean, you'll see as the players move up in level, they're, they're very good at finding just getting good pieces, right, based on pawn structure and so forth. So that's what you, yeah, that's something. But but you're doing it here. You're, you're starting to do that. You, And you can challenge my pieces. I cannot challenge your bishop. Only move would be 96. That's actually a candidate. But, you know, if I'm going to move my knight back, I want to make you play e3 first. Because that's going to weaken your light squares. That diagonal becomes very open for the bishop, right? Queen e6. I think queen e6 is the move. Just, again, solidifying the position. Solidifying uh, e6. Yeah, just queen e6. That's the move. And then I'm just playing a little solid now. You know, solidly here. Rook f8. Pressure on e2. But you've taken... Your bishop f4 was great because it took pressure off... Um, it took pressure off of the B file. I think the stream is still working good. Looks like we're coming in clearly on there. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here. A lot of, a lot of complex lines. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's try and play this from here. I mean, I don't know. Without an increment, or let's try and get, let's see if we can get to the end game with this amount of time left. And then we'll, if we get down to like a minute, then we'll add more. Okay. So, what do I, hey, this is complex, complex, complex. Should I try just play like rook c1, maybe? Mm. Yeah, and then, yeah. then you get, well, then you can play, you want to chip at my center with the feet. Yeah, see, rook c1, and then you slowly start chipping away at my, at my hanging pawns. Right? Hmm. Ouch. It's a good one. Oh, what about what about bishop c4? Yeah, bishop c4 just gets another active piece. And then finally, I might try to occupy b, because b3 has been a weakness that I've been trying to get to. Well, it's not going away, right? But I've been trying to look at that and land there, get an outpost out of that. For example, let's say the bishop got there and I played a5, a4, whatever. That could be an endgame advantage, too. So we really, in a position like this, it's not, like, at this point, I'm almost thinking this just is probably going to become an endgame. So we both want to try to think with that in mind and think about the kinds of endgames we would get. So if I go bishop c4, yeah, that's the way. Because you're threatening e3 and winning the, or even just taking my, I don't know. Again, I don't think you want to, I don't think you really want to give up your bishop on g2. But it's still something I have to worry about. Bishop takes and then rook takes e5. No, no, it's not happening yet, but I still like bishop c4, though, because. All right, wait yeah. one second, coach, one second. Sure. Yeah, I'm going with that. All right, I'm back. Okay, I just right. I just played it. I just played bishop c4. I don't like this. Well, my my pieces are residing on your fourth rank <laughs> for now, but we'll see if you can kick them back. Yeah, I do like the pieces there. They're helping give me more I central control. My light school bishop doesn't seem so strong anymore. Should I go trade it for your knight? I'm trying to think. Uh, but think about it. It's not about what it's doing now. It's about 
think about in the future, like if you give it up, you're really weakening your light squares. So you have to you have to consider how much you're weakening your light squares. Maybe can I go like F three and try to just crack Oh wait, it? wait, now that you've played Bishop F four, you can you can at least consider F three. And I don't really want to take it because then I lose my knight. <laughs> I probably just lose the knight because your rook's gonna pin it to the queen now that I play queen six. But it, it's a weird, somewhat weakening move, of course. It's always a weakening move to play f3 when you've already moved your h-pawn. You know, because now g3 is going to be weak. But at least you've got your bishop move, and no one's bothering your bishop on f4. So I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I think you should do that. Okay. You're going for it? My chance. i got to break this thing down. Now, I do have an option like... I do have knight b3 or bishop, no, bishop b3 would be the only way. But the problem is if after queen d3, I don't have like c4 because my knight hangs. Uh, yeah, bishop b3 doesn't do anything yet. I think it was more just to cover the c file, trying to block your rook and stuff. Okay, let's see here. Knight d6. Knight d6 doesn't have a future. My, well, knight f6 is covering my king side more. Yeah, knight f6 is more secure. Should I take? No, I should not take. <laughs> no, not f6, and I hit your pawn on e2. That's the point. Yeah, I start to strike at the pawn. So let's do that. All right, picking up the pace a little bit now. We're down to three minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, should you take it? If you take it, you really weaken. You weaken a square, though. If you take g4, do you see which square you might really weaken permanently? Um... Well, the square I was well, using. Already, my e three looks really weak already. Yeah, at least you have the white, you have the dark squared bishop though, so you cover that. But when you play takes, if you take on g four, what was your pawn giving up? Your pawn on f three is giving I up. I permanently lose control of e four. Per yeah, perfect. So perfect for me. <laughs> yeah, so you don't want to do that exactly. You don't want to do that. Uh. What if I tried to just go in? I mean, you I could know. you could play for some what strike. What if I went bishop g5 now? What if I went bishop g5 now? I think you're dropping something, aren't you? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. You have to no. You no, no no. Look at it. Look at it. I don't know. Because I'm Do walking. I have to play e3 now. Oh, e3 is a move. I kind of like it. Seems nice. Let's say I drop the knight on b3. I don't think I want to take on f3. I could, but you get a lot of counterplay that way. I mean, yeah, I have the g4 and the e4 squares to use, but you have squares to use too, so you can use the g5 yeah, square. But I think I should play e3. Yeah, I'm not going to take, I think. It just it helps your knight. If I can, Your knight is not doing anything, so why should I trade it? Um, and besides, yeah, it's fine. I can always take, I can let you take on g4 and take back with my h-pawn, and again, knight e4. Okay, now the question is uh, knight c6. Or knight b3. I think knight c6 is more natural, just like knight f6. Knight b3, you just move your rook, and where is he going? He doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I have an idea here. Let me try this. Oh, wait a second. Oh, you have b3 if I go knight c6, don't you? I forgot about that. Jeez, this is complex. Oh, yeah. This is like the definition of complex. This, this is like a hardcore kid. Be happy that we're streaming this for y'all. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And you are not, yeah, you're underrated. You're definitely not, yeah, you're playing much higher than 1100. You're playing more like 16 to 1800 level. Nah, 17, dude, I'm 1900. I'm streaky. I'm streaky. There's nothing else. To no, you're playing A level here. Yeah, you're playing 1800 at least, I think, because you haven't made any errors and you're, you're understanding the position. I had to do that. Yeah, knight c6 and b3. I have to be real careful. It's again, it's a super sharp position. Although it has slowed down a little bit from like five five moves ago, things were flying. It has slowed down a bit. Mm. It's just a struggle for. It's just like a struggle for squares it's and for active. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's a, str it's a struggle for squares and. Active pieces. What are I playing on maybe like rook b3? Is that a thing? Nah. Rook c3? 
Yeah, sorry. Well, that's your, that's like one of the main moves. I mean, it's either probably either C two or C three. I was what I was thinking about doing was knight C six to E five to D three, but then if I go knight C six, I'm like, oh wait a second, you have, you have B three, and then you just take. I'm gonna put the knight on C three. Well, now you're now you're attacking. Okay, now I probably have to go queen B six. I would like to plant the knight there with A five A four. If given time, I play A five A four, and I'm very happy with that. Um, you're probably not gonna let that happen. Oh, this is so messy. Such a messy scenario here. It's messy, messy. Okay. I guess I'm going with queen b6 because that guards the knight. Otherwise, what do I do? Yeah, I kind of have to keep... Like I, Now it's actually necessary to maintain control of b3. Otherwise, you go b3 yourself. Yeah. I still have that space advantage. But I again, know, with, but with the space advantage comes weaknesses for me. Yes, it most definitely does in this game. But I have weaknesses to use too, like c4, b3. Ooh, I like the idea of playing queen c2 here. Get f5, I like it. Yeah, just go for it, why not? And I don't have a whole ton of time, so it's like, you got to trust your gut instinct yes. here, folks. Yeah, we just play it out. Uh, super sharp now. I think... Just like, this is like... One oh, that's a good move. That's a really strong move. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on, hold on. So I get this in. I'm just going for it because... I'm just going for it because I want the E4 square. I kind of have to... It's not a move I really wanted to make. Well, I think that's like bishop or knight. Probably bishop. I don't know. I mean, taking back with knight gives you... Square. No, I like knight. I but like no, knight hold on, hold on. Yeah. Dude, you should... I don't have a whole lot of time. For yeah, like... yeah, yeah. It's kind of like I just gotta. Just gotta go for it. Okay. Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh shoot! What? Ninety four. Yeah. No, no, it's not so simple. I actually don't like of my. Of course, business. it's not so simple. We're playing this death game. Of course, it's not so simple. Ah, oh, Nope. I can't let you get in there either. Wow. All right, I'm going with this move. Okay, you have a good move here. I think. All right, should we add a little time now? Now that we're getting into the end, or you can, you want, or you want to flag me? <laughs> how about we get to? How about we get to three minutes? Or you want add three minutes? All right, I'm done here. Yeah, I mean, we otherwise it's just a scramble. We'll we can scramble and blitz it, but we can't. Then we, but then, but since it's a sparring game, we can just go. Uh, you have, okay, you, I get three, you get, like, four, because you had more time than me, or you had, like, 30 more seconds, didn't you? Yeah. You have, like, four. Okay. Wait, what do I do here, though? What do I do here, though? Um... Yeah. Okay. Mm. So no, you have a good move here. I'm just going to say you have a good move. I mean, you've got to have a good move here, because you have so much activity. Oh, never mind. Never mind. No, well, it is probably good. I thought you had something. I thought you had a. I was. Yeah, I thought you had a rook take c4, then queen take c4 with the fork or something. But no, never mind. But no, but even the, even the exchange sacrifice is interesting because you're going to get the yeah, die. That's what I was thinking. I think I have to take the bishop here pretty much. You don't have to. Oh, since your rook is hanging. Yeah, but it's an exchange sack that it's actually, that's actually not that bad for you, right? Yeah. Now I pretty much have to take back. I don't see any other way of delaying it. But I don't know. I don't like this at all. I do not like this. I can't see. There's, there's my weaknesses. There's my weaknesses right there. Bring in the wrecking ball. I G. Okay. I can't avoid the checks now. Am I getting mated or something? Okay. Are if you? I, are you? This is gonna be insane, folks. This is gonna be insane. Okay, hold on. If I go to G7, ooh. Oh, bishop check. Okay, hold on. I have to, I'm gonna stay objective. I'm not gonna you freak out about it. But bishop check, king G6. I think it's okay actually. But it's not it's not comfortable. <laughs> I'm my king is your king is way safer than mine. You have your g3, you can play king h2 and you're fine, you know. I can't go if I went oh wait a second, I could have gone to h7, because then if you checked, I would have taken. I don't know, that's fine. That's fine. But then I have but I saw I calculated up to king g6 and I said, okay. This seems to be temporarily safe. At least I have I can guard laterally now. I'm up the exchange, but that doesn't mean very much right now. Your look, your bishop air is going to shine here, though, right? 
F5 is weak. H5 is weak. Your bishop's awesome, right? Do I go and put the bishop back now so I can check with the knight, or what do I do? Oh, that's a good move. What is That could be a good move. Well, then I'll just hide on it. I mean, I don't know. I'll just hide on H7, but maybe I have to sack and exchange back or something, possibly. Let me see. There's no way I can maybe even I stop. Kept my bishop on the other direction. I don't know. It's very unpleasant, though. Very unpleasant position for me. I, I need to challenge your queen or something. Knight d2, maybe? Check. Yeah, at least I, this guy is not doing anything anymore, so he's going to come back. And now, if you, see if you take it or not. Well, the nice thing is you can avoid the trade with a check if you want to. Yeah, I like that. Option. This is a super sharp game. Uh, couldn't have hoped for a better sparring game, really. Yeah, folks. Wait, hold on. King, king? Okay, but now the king goes back to g7, since you don't have the bishop there anymore. He'll just shuffle between g7 and h g7 and g6. Just tell me when you want to blitz it out. Which, at which point you want to just try and blitz it out. If we both have around a minute or something. Or we could just keep adding time. Because, yeah, it's such a good game. We don't want to spoil the game somehow. Yeah, by the no uh, You should think twice about that. What would happen then? What if I take back with the pawn, actually? you got to look at that. Or maybe I just play it. I mean, you can always just move your queen. Wait, no. If you take bishop for the knight, I just take your queen. Unless you sack your queen or something. So your queen's hanging. Yeah, so I have to do something about C2 that. is, B2 is hanging. Maybe. I just can't do anything, though. This move is, I love this move. The queen's in the right spot for this one. Okay. I'm trying to trade queens now. You have kind of a tactical move. But yeah, I mean, you could give up your bishop now. Obviously, I can't take back with my knight. But I can take with my pawn. It's kind of murky. Watch out for counterattacks, though. I, I'm trying to counter. Like, we're both attacking each other now. Because I'm trying to go, like, if I take back, I get knight f3 check and rook d2 or something. There's a lot of there's a lot of counterattacks. But you're so... No, but look, your advantage is you're really solid here. I can't really get in. Unless, yeah, don't take on e4. I wouldn't recommend that. If you don't take on e4, what do I do? I have no threats. I accept trading queen. My queen is kind of hanging right now. Okay, I move your queen. You can, do you take her? I don't think you should take, should you? Yeah, you don't want to go into an endgame with the exchange down. Maybe That's, I go queen. It's not uh, necessary. Then it gives me chances to win if you go into the endgame. Yeah, just avoid the trade. Um, how do I do this? I need to somehow... What about C4? Yeah, I think c4. Because it was kind of almost hanging anyway. And then I can maybe run it to c3 in some lines. And it, yeah, it just seems natural. I don't know what to do here. Okay, let's add, add another minute. Sure. All right, let's add a minute. So essentially like manual increment. We're doing manual. We're probably, end up, we're probably adding about 15 seconds per move, as it turns out. Sam, I just added you an exact minute. I gave you five of them. Okay, I'll Oh, wait, wait, no. I gave you five. I gave you one. No, no, I'll give you... No, hold on. I, we'll have... We'll both have the same time. Okay. But I have no idea what I do here. Well, your knight and bishop are great. You solved the problem of your knight, that's for sure. You have a great knight now. Well, we both have an equally great knight. But again, your, yours has a little more impact. But your knight, I feel like, is defending so much. Yeah, yeah. Like, my, no, my knight's here. And that's why I played knight B to D. Knight B to D2. And it's the other knight. Usually it's the white knight B to D2. But yeah, that's why I went to D2 because Maybe I can just play holds. rook D1. Maybe rook D1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that puts more pressure on me. Oh, that's a good move. Yeah, that's a very good move. Hmm. Yeah, it's a very good move. Okay, I was going to go C3. So maybe now I go C3 takes takes. C three takes two. That seems to that seems to still hold everything together. So at least I so I add some more support to my knight, and then if you take, I can trade try to trade. And then I really try to trade queens. You could keep avoiding the trade though. I think. Is there a way I can get to the seventh rank here if I open some? 
At least my rook holds, oh, with your queen, at least my rook holds the d file, but I can't really cover the seventh because your knight's on the e5. I can't go rook f, well, I can go rook f7 and lose the exchange back. Maybe I end up giving you the exchange back, but how do you get there? Queen b, oh, you can't go queen b1, never mind. So takes, takes, you'd have to go to, no, if you take, you're trading queens. Yeah, if you take on c3, you have to trade queens. It's kind of hard not to take, though. What do you do? What if I play bishop d5 because your knight's stuck defending your knight? What if I ignore you? I, what if I just ignore you? Oh, I can yeah, ignore you and take on b2. Oh, then you get to the seventh. Maybe I go oh, I see what you're saying. What is going on? Uh, I could go queen takes b2, and that'll force the trade of queens. That's safer than pawn takes b2 for sure. Yeah, that's definitely safer. I really like pawn takes b2 for some reason, but queen check. I have to look at that. Queen check. Rook f7. No, that's very, very ugly. I don't I don't need all that a counterattack. Let's just play. Let's just play queen takes b2. I think I'm forcing an endgame now. And then once we get to the endgame, we'll have more time. We'll play out the endgame. Um, yeah, if I had done the other way, I'd, I'd probably get majored. What am I supposed to do now? Uh, I think you should have taken my pawn on c3. Because you let my pawn get to b2. I'm lost. I'm going to get the rook, huh? Is there any way you can do anything about it? No. Ah, sorry. Is it? You almost had me there. I mean, you had such a vicious counterattack. My c pawn was my only hope. You guys had time. You're resigning? Uh, I was going to have time. Is it just nothing to do with that point, huh? Once we get into the end game? The end game is too. The end game is way too locked, dude. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat you in an end game. No. Yeah, it's getting the rook. Sorry, that was such a great game, though. Really good practice game. But it really, I think you just, you made one blunder basically. When I played c3, you just have to take, because I, I think you didn't, you didn't, um, you underestimated the c pawn running in. I think. So let's say I go c3. When you go back to c3, let's say you take. Let's see. The game report. Should I do the game report? Do a quick yeah. a couple things. Okay. So that was a great game, though. That was just it was just a practice game, you know. But you did, you came really close and you did really well. Yeah, but that was you did exactly what what I thought you should do, which is that you kind of waited for your moment, you stayed solid, and you struck back against all these weaknesses. Um, okay, so you got almost eighty. I was in the high eighties. Yeah, so it's not slightly more accurate. That's it. You know, it was pretty close. You made only one. I made, yeah, it says I made zero. You made one block. What do you That's mean? It. I just got a thing for getting a rapid rating of 1,000. What does this mean? I've been above 1,000. No, it's just saying it's like delayed or something like that. I saw that. Okay. Ooh, so, cool. we can look at key moments. Are, oh, the key moment. You're checking that out. Wait, so it's saying, yeah, it's saying when I played d5, you're better. I should have gone bishop a6, it's saying. Yeah, I should have stuck with that, right? Because d5, I knew it was kind of risky. Let's see. Oh, wait, can you see it on the stream right now? Or you want to share the screen? I think it's yeah. Look at this. When I played C takes B five, that was they called that a game changer, a best reply to an opponent's mistake. Wait, hold on. So C takes C five was good. Yeah, and then, and then it says you're like up a point. Is it? But then something happened. Ah, you what? You had you had Bishop takes G five. Oh, because then you have you have a tactic there because the knight hangs on C six after Bishop takes G five. Knight take you see that line? Instead of uh, instead of castles. Wow. Amazing line. That's a nice tactic right there. That's just a way of and that's a way of really utilizing your um your bishop. And then you just take the knight, I think. And you're you're up two pawns with a with an awesome position. Just up two pawns going into like an endgame, transitioning close to an endgame. Wow. I totally see I knew there was some weakness. So so my mistake. No, the second I played d5 and traded, you had bishop takes g5. That's a hard move to see, though. It doesn't no, look like it's possible. I didn't see that. It didn't look possible. There but was it, one blunder in that game. There was one. Which is the seat when he let me take on b2, right? Yeah. Yeah, you played a great. No, I was just, you know, it was a practice game. That was a great game. Yeah, Sorry, was I was time crunched. I was time crunched, and I don't do well in the yeah. game. Yeah, no, but look, we were both making best moves. Like, knight d4 was best. 
uh, Queen, but it says I'm better at that point. It says I have an advantage at that point. So you had to seize your moment because suddenly once I get G4 in, um, oh, you even had Bishop F4 right away. But once I get that in, then I started sort of like trying to overrun your position. Bishop A6, uh, H5 was, oh, should, it says I should have taken H3 actually. Okay, Bishop F4 was a nice move. Then I'm only slightly better, it says after that. Slight advantage for black, that's it. Rook, okay, Rook D8 was correct. H4 was fine, or pawn takes pawn was fine. And then instead of queen e6, I should have gone knight e6. I think I overlooked something there. Yeah, now you're basically equal again. And then bishop c4 it says it's dead equal now. <laughs> I mean, it's a very, it's still so much play in the position. Wait, can you see it on the stream, or do you want to? Can you see it now? Pawn f3. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not on the stream right now. Okay, but if you go, let's just look at the key moment. Just go, you got, you got, you're looking over the game though, right? Yeah, I looked at the key moment. I just bugged. And that's a little upsetting. Okay, if you go to move, oh wow, I had weird. Oh, I didn't look at that. I had d4 on move 26. Okay, let's just look at the key moment towards the end. But you were better now. Yeah, John. Yeah, yeah. You 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 had the. Uh, you definitely had the advantage against me, right? After knight takes f3. 94. Yeah, 94 was the best move still, but you're up like one, more than a point. Rook takes c4. Yeah, I just knew that you had a vicious counterattack after queen takes c4 check. King g7. Uh, it says knight g. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought you were going to do that. Knight g5 to come into e6. And if I take the knight, then your bishop opens up. Yeah, so you see on move, uh, on move 31, maybe on move 31, maybe knight g5. I don't know. It's not clear anymore. It's not so a certain way it was. Yeah, so king g7 was my best chance. Maybe bishop g5 or knight g5. No, knight e5 was, or knight e5 too. Maybe not bishop e5 because after I go to g6, there's no more checks, right? No, it says bishop f4 is your, but no, you, know, you played the best move again. But we were really low on time. Okay, knight bd2. Yeah, the result, the result is the bad move. Well, yeah, no, but oh, but still, the play was. Just imagine this is a long game. In a long game like this, no, you did great. Okay, but yeah, we were kind of scrambling there. What could have happened? You are we done streaming left? Oh, I'm just no, I'm just doing it since we're analyzing it. I, I just, I'll just finish the stream here. Let's just look quickly at that last moment. Okay. So Queen, no, but it says it's equal again. Knight BD2 is the only move again. Back to D2 again, and that's the move that made it equal. Um, mm. because. Yeah, but you know, it wasn't anything concrete that you had. But you, again, you had you had at least. But the point is, I was putting a lot of pressure on you, and then you had the counter pressure, and you at least had an equal game. So it says it doesn't like Quincy wanted preferred bishop. Oh wait, the battery. Um, it preferred bishop. Okay, hold on. So queen b three. Just bishop takes knight. But that, yeah, you were talking about doing bishop takes knight, actually, on move uh, 35. Wait, was I actually right? Apparently. There was, was, well, I have it on Komodo. Komodo likes it. Let me see. I, I don't know. I didn't like the idea. Oh, because it would have... I would have had to take back with the pawn. But again, I didn't really like... I thought you were probably fine there, yeah. Like, so, for example, if, if you go... Um, okay, so if you look on move 35... Bishop takes e4. I can't take with the knight because you take my queen. I can't take your queen because your bishop takes back. You see that? Move 35. So I take back with the pawn. Um, yeah, knight f3. I, I, I was just saying be careful about knight f3, but it doesn't do anything, really. I mean, it looks a little scary, but it says you're better here. I mean, my king is the one. The reason probably is because my king is the one. Exposed. We're down to exchange, but it doesn't matter. You have so much compensation here. Plug in my computer. Oh, yeah. Time pressure damage. You can play like this. Just keep playing like this. If you're playing like this in a tournament, like a 45 minute game or whatever, with especially if there's increment, it's fine. It's like, it became like a blitz game at the end. We were playing it with like a few minutes on the clock. You know? Me and Steve did like. I only made one blunder and like two mistakes or something. Yeah. One blunder, two yeah, mistakes, I only made one blunder and like two mistakes or something. No, that's yeah. pretty good. No, that's pretty good. One you were around 80%. Two mistakes, 
and then everything else was on the north side of the scale. Yeah, no, you're doing really well. No, you should feel proud of yourself. You played well, again. Don't worry about the result. It's just a sparring game. Um, very nice play. Um, well, yeah, you have. Wait, let's see. Let's see the key moment. So I go c4, which the computer actually doesn't like. But again, it's just such a things are just flying around. It's going to be very complex for humans to play, play the best one. But we're 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 getting like a late middle game now. I thought we I thought this was going to fizzle down to an end game. So it says apparently instead of c4, I should have rook five and just doubled rooks or something, or aimed at your knight. But then you go. Rook That's interesting. We just sit down game. And play oh yeah, and like like you said, all of our games are fascinating. Anything we play. Seriously, like it's like we just sit down and play something abnormal. Anything we play ends up super interesting. Okay, okay let's see. Um. Yeah, let's see. So we got. It says bishop a3 is a blunder. Oh, did I miss? Oh, I missed knight f3 check, actually. I know. We always get great games. Well, it's because we're both. Yeah, we're, we're discussing a lot of interesting ideas. I guess. That's true, though. Like, both of us are kind of like. They kind of look both sides. Not really, but. Yeah, but I mean, we're just ideas for both sides. Yeah, that's true. But you're playing your best, but you're making your decision. Uh, you have to, you, okay, so I went c3, no, c3 says, but I missed, I missed, uh, no, after bishop h3, I had knight f3 check to win a second, oh, knight f3 check, and then, and then rook takes d1 with fork on move, after, after, uh, after b takes c3, so c3, no, after bishop h3, you should take, and yeah, that was your move, though, when I went c3, you just have to take, and it's still, like, an equal game, it says minus 0.15 or something, or minus 0.26, yeah, so that's, that was your last moment right there to just, you know, you, I think you almost had me, but at least you could have had a draw. Then I messed up. Plug is, yeah, I'm going to stream then. But yeah, the key is queen takes b2. Queen oh, takes b2. Over. Uh, one second. Yeah, but okay. then I'm, but Bye, now, everyone. wait, hold on. Right out. Okay, wait, hold on. All right. And I'm going to end the stream yet. Yeah, one second. So we'll do. Love joy, bread out.